Good morning, everybody. I'm going to give some people some time to join in. We're doing the local artist live this morning. Hey, Laura. Got a few people in already. Coffee on deck, of course. Is the sound good? Can everyone hear me pretty well? This is the first live video I've done, so I'm not used to this. Always got to have coffee. Speaking of, I've got your painting over here. I'm probably going to show off uh, here in a few. Okay, good. Um, got six people in. Got my notes ready. Oh man. How's everyone doing today? Everybody else got coffee? Or tea or something? Hey Catherine. Yeah. Just let me know when you're ready and it'll be here. Laura has bought one of my original pieces, one of the coffee paintings I did, so she's got to come pick it up. Can't even see what time it is anymore. Oakley Garden. Hopefully we'll get a mix of people. I know a lot of the artists around Montgomery and surrounding areas and people at the museum, so I'm sure we'll have a good mix. Thank you. Yeah, it was the shirt was perfect for today because I mentioned the Mona Lisa before. But um yeah, my buddy Javi makes them. He's actually from Montgomery. Javi uh I can't remember his last name now. But um yeah, he made the shirt and gave me one a few years ago, so it's one of my favorite ones. But it was perfect for the interview. Yeah, I'm here in my studio now, which is my at-home studio is where I work. We've got a storage building out back that I've cleaned out and converted into my full service studio now. So that's where I spend most of my time. I'm going to show you all some of the supplies and stuff I use. We'll let a few more people get in, maybe get to 10. We're at 7. That sound good to you, Laura? Get the ten people and start. Eight, nine. One more. Cool. All right. Well, good morning, everyone. I'll go ahead and officially get started with the local artist live this morning. Um, my name is Pockertees. For those who don't know me, uh, Pockertees comes from, it was inspired by Tupac and Socrates. Tupac Shakur, the famous musician and actor, hip hop artist. But, uh, and of course, everybody knows who Socrates is, hopefully. But uh, those two are big influences, not necessarily in my artwork, but just in life in general. And uh, through what they stood for and believed in and what they represent to our society and history and things like that. So it started as a pen name. Um, I was doing a lot of writing for poetry and putting thoughts and ideas together through words and writing. And it started as a pen name for that. Um, it represents you know, more than just the Tupac and Socrates. It gets into duality and yin and yang and positive, negative, male and female. But we live in this dual dimension or dimension of duality, I think. So 
uh, it's a representation of that and of course on the inside we all have you know our our light and dark sides as well um, and even uh, like to get started into how I got going into art um, when I was a kid I, I drew a lot and it just for fun as a hobby never really thought about being a, an artist so to speak but uh, the yin yang symbol is something that I, I drew it a lot when I was a kid and it was I was always into martial arts and stuff so it was more connected to that but being able to grow up and learn what it represents and incorporate it into my life and what I'm doing now is always a good thing um, let me get to some of these comments was I an art major? No. Um, I'm completely self-taught. I don't have any formal art teaching. Uh, YouTube University, I say. But um, yeah, just a lot of practice and learning. And uh, I mean, it definitely comes natural to me, the creative process and, and being able to create art. But as far as any art major or school or anything, no, I don't have any of that. Um, I mean, that's what I was, I was really getting into is it was just a something I like to do and I've always had a, an appreciation for art for sure and artists themselves and what they were able to do um, but if you would ask me five or ten years ago well I've been painting for five years so maybe five but if you'd have asked me ten years ago uh, if I would have ever been an artist my answer would have definitely been no because uh, it was it was something as I said in the interview with Laura uh, on the, the website art or becoming an artist was really something I just stumbled into from doing it as a hobby or you know I started sketching and drawing and I was better than what I what I thought I was going to be but you know it was still just something I did for fun and then kind of got bored with sketching and I wanted to do bigger stuff and seeing a lot of the paintings and art especially abstract art um, seeing that is what made me want to get into painting um, so back in 2015 it was July 28th of 2015 uh, I went to Walmart, I believe, and bought some really cheap art supplies and went home and started painting and haven't stopped since then. But um, I, it was just something, like I said, that came very natural once I started doing it. Um, so I started painting in 2015. Uh, it was later that same year I did my first, my first paid gig ever as an artist was a mural, believe it or not, uh, in a retirement home in Fort Walton Beach, Florida. Uh, I moved down there around 2013, and so I was there when I started painting. I'm originally from Prattville, that's where I live now, but um, I was in Fort Walton Beach, Florida when I started painting, and that was in 2015, so that's when I did the first uh, mural that I've done, which was in a retirement home. It was a family tree mural for their residents. They were going to hang their pictures up uh, on the branches and stuff. So I did that and it turned out really well. I mean, they were happy with it. And from there, I got into a local art gallery uh, that was right down the street from our house. And again, I kind of stumbled in there one day and got on their waiting list. I, I thought it would be, you know, maybe a year or so before I could even get in. But uh, they emailed me within a couple of weeks and said they had a space open. It was actually the Friday that I finished uh, or the when I, the day that I finished the, the mural that I did, uh, I got an email saying that the space was open at the art gallery. So I got in there and hung some work up. And I think the next week I ended up selling you know, one of my paintings. So that set me off and I've been going ever since. Um, the art gallery that I was in in Fort Walton Beach is called HH Arts. It's a, it's a local gallery and they've got a lot of different work. I was one of the youngest ones there. Um, both as an artist and as my age, but um, it was a, I learned a lot from being there and the owners were great. I got to do a, a mural, which was the one that was featured on the website, the Be the Change mural, came from the quote, uh, Be the Change You Wish to See in the World by Gandhi. And so I did that on their building. They had like uh, eight panels on the side of their building. so there were seven or eight artists that volunteered to do the murals uh, there and it's, it's still there now if you go down Bill Parkway in Fort Walton Beach you'll see it um, so that was a good learning experience just from being around other artists and being able to get my work out there and seen by other people um, I did a couple of other displays there in Fort Walton the public library for a month 
um, and they had a lot of uh, local art walk events downtown that I participated in and sold a few pieces there so it was just getting my feet wet and you know meeting a lot of the local artists there and stuff and then in uh, 2000, uh, late 2016 we moved back to Prattville and that's where I've been since then um, when I moved back I, I didn't know anybody in the art community in Montgomery um, at, None of my friends were artists or anything like that, so I really I was kind of worried that I wasn't going to be able to continue doing it. Um, to to go back a little bit back to Florida, um, I actually quit my job to start to do the mural that I was talking the very first one. Um, I I quit my job because they wouldn't give me the time off to do it, so I took a leap of faith and did that, and that's kind of where the the story started. But um, when I moved back, I was worried that I wasn't going to be able to continue doing that because I didn't have any connections and you know wasn't sure how it was gonna go but I did the uh, the artist on tap event uh, at the Capital City Club in October of 2016 and it went really well that was my first time obviously doing any kind of art event in the Montgomery area so it was nervous but I mean I got a lot of uh, good feedback and met some people that I did make connections with uh, Kalanji Abdul with uh, 21 dreams uh, Tracy Howell, she was the one hosting the event and met a lot of other local artists and stuff that night. So it, it was really a good experience and gave me more confidence in what I was doing and my work and stuff like that. So it definitely set the tone for what I've been doing in Montgomery since then. I've, uh, I've been a member with 21 Dreams for a couple years now and they do a lot of the art walks. Uh, we were at the Dragon Boat Race, uh, the alley down in by the alley bar and stuff a few times but uh, it's always been a good experience with them doing events and they do a lot of local community activities with art and getting people involved and things like that they've got a gallery on Clay Street actually um, so I've been doing a lot of different things around Montgomery obviously I've gotten in with the museum and Laura she's been very supportive of my work on social media and uh, I did a demo uh, for them a few months ago uh, their evening in the gardens uh, it, or the sculpture garden and it went well that was the first time I did a, a live painting event um, painting it and creating art is a very private thing for me I don't usually do a lot of live stuff or you know when I'm in my studio it's just me the art and music usually and coffee but uh, so it's it's kind of uh, nerve-wracking for me to be to put myself out there but I, I still I try to break through that a little bit but um that's why I'm doing this live interview now but uh, to get into some of the work that I do um, I started out working in acrylics it was just purely abstract I mean I, I could draw but I was still I didn't have the technical know-how with paint to really create what I wanted and so I started just doing abstract and getting a feel for colors and how paint worked and things like that. And from there got into more uh, realism and portrait work, stuff like that. Um, so I, I, going back to the, the duality with Pocrates and, and what it represents, I, it, it does reflect in my work because I go from one extreme to the other. I have a lot of purely abstract work with just colors and textures and things and then I've got more realistic detailed portraits and uh, eyes I paint a lot of eyes and things like that I've got one over here that I'm gonna show but um so yeah I do I, being self-taught not fitting into one box of art and having one style where all of my paintings kind of look the same I know a lot of artists have that about their work but that's really not something that I do because I get inspired by so many things and you know when I get bored or burnt out with abstract I can kind of shift gears to doing more you know getting better at drawing and doing learning things with that and then when I get burnt out on that I get to go back to abstract and throw paint around and you know get more creative with it uh, I do a lot of collage work I've got I've learned different mediums I've, I've started with acrylics but I've gotten into oils uh, using cold wax medium which is a, a texture medium that you add to oils and I do a lot of abstract work with that so I just I bounce around from different things and you know learning one thing from one technique 
will help with something else. So it, it's all connected, as Da Vinci said. Uh, everything's connected. So I, I do believe that. Um, I've got, I was going to show, I don't want to spend the whole time talking, but um, I've got like some of my original drawings I still have that I did sketching back in 2015. Um, lions are a big, <laughs> big theme in my work. But I've got some of those and I'm actually working on, I put it on Facebook and social media the other day, yesterday, but I've got a big Tupac piece that I'm working on there. Um, I'm gonna flip the camera real quick and you can see my other workstation over here. So I use my oils and I've actually been doing, uh, well, learning and experimenting with uh, clay, doing some sculptures and stuff. That's kind of my next venture that I wanna get into. But I use oils and that's my little workstation over there. I've got some work out that I was gonna show. Um, those are some abstract acrylic mixed media pieces. I use, and that's an oil painting. Um, but yeah, that's my other little workstation over there. But I want to get off track. Let me make sure. Can somebody give me the time? What time is it? My clock is hidden. So getting into the abstract work, what I like to do with it is... I've, I've learned a lot with composition and how to work with composition and that was one thing I really had no idea about. Um, okay, thank you, Laura, 10, 15, got you. Uh, and it really, it makes a difference, especially with abstract work. I've learned that, you know, good and bad abstract work can really make a difference between composition and colors and how they interact with each other and stuff. So it, there's a whole science to art, I feel like that, especially when you get into abstract because people look at it and you know tend to feel like anybody can do that and while that is very true uh, I do feel like there's you know a science to it and an art within itself of creating good abstract art it's not just smearing some paint on the canvas and making some lines and calling it a day uh, it, there's a lot of emotion that goes into it and you get mad and get happy and they go back and forth so it, it all comes out uh, in the art, I think, and that's what really draws me to abstract is you, you. I couldn't recreate the same paintings I've done again just because it wouldn't be the same movements and timing and everything coming together the same way to create the same picture or image. And it, it's just it's a moment in time captured on canvas is a good way of putting it. I feel like, but um, I. It brings out a lot of expression because I've learned using, I use a lot of charcoal and uh, color pencils, pastels, things like that to, you know, mark making is one thing I've learned a lot about. Um, you, I use stencils to create patterns and things like that. So it's just putting all that together to create these compositions and, and something that triggers the eye or the mind in a, in a subconscious kind of way, you know, what one person hates another person might love and vice versa and I, I've seen it firsthand numerous times where you never know what someone someone is going to connect with um I've done pieces that you know were okay to me and I post a picture of them on Facebook or something and someone's like oh that's your best painting ever that's my favorite one um and, and I've posted stuff that I thought was my best that you know didn't really get a reaction or not the reaction I would think it would so yeah, it's it's uh, it's always fun to see what people connect with and creating something from your mind that you know doesn't exist anywhere else in the universe is is pretty powerful in itself. So um, it's fun. Um, I always it's what I always say I'm an abstract artist. I feel like an abstract artist because even with my realistic stuff. Um, you know, I still incorporate some of my abstract techniques and stuff like that. Like even with the Tupac piece, I'll show you. Um, you know, you know what it is, I and mean, it, it does have a realistic, a realistic effect. But I've still incorporated a lot of the color, and uh, I've learned color value. That's another thing. Um, you know, using light and dark colors to create shadow effect, and you know, it's not always just black for shadows and white for light. That kind of thing. Mixing colors and 
that's a whole another science in, in mixing colors with oils and acrylics and stuff. So there's a lot to learn and, and you're never finished. I'm, there's still so much I want to do and learn in other art forms and even with painting itself. And so yeah, it's an ongoing process for sure. Um, I know I've kind of gotten off track, Laura, I'm sorry. My notes are just out the window. But uh, <laughs> does anybody have any questions so far? Anything anybody wants to say? I get to talking and just forget where I'm at sometimes. Um, so I'll give a minute to, for anybody to ask any questions they have so far. I'm not done talking, but I'll take a little coffee break. Cool. <laughs> yeah, it's real quick. I like that. Yeah, you can keep that. Thank you, Laura. Um, yeah, I'll show you some more. We'll do that real quick. I'm gonna take you off the camera mount here. So yeah, there's pot. You can see it better. It's a 36 by 48 piece. I like big stuff. I don't really paint small unless I have to. Um, so most of the stuff I have is big. So there's Einstein. Um, he's one. I did that portrait last year, uh, but he's definitely one of my favorites and one of the bigger ones. Um, this right here is my Velvet Queen sunflower. My hands are shaking. Catherine's gonna laugh at me. Um, I actually grew that sunflower from seed and did a painting. Uh, I guess you could say it was a nod to van gogh but uh yeah i grew the sunflowers from seed and then painted it a couple of weeks ago and this is laura's painting here it's uh obviously a coffee piece but uh yeah see this right here is actual coffee grounds that i put on and sealed down so it's all it's good it's not going anywhere and some coffee beans over here of course um, so yeah, it turned out really good, and that one is Laura's, it's hers. This is one of my other abstract pieces that I have. Um, I'll bring it over in the light. As you can see, I've got paintings stacked up everywhere. <laughs> um, this is called Autumn Rain. That's what I call it, at least. But, uh, it's got some texture. I'll go back over and show you some of the texture mediums I have. If I'm moving the camera too fast, just tell me to slow down. Um, but again, I use a lot of the drip technique and there's some faint pencil charcoal marks underneath and some more texture. I like to scrape, it's very physical. I have a very physical process with, that's something else I'm working on. It's a sneak peek. I'm not done with it by any means. Um, and there's my bookshelf. They are getting a full view now. Um, these over here, go back. That's another one. This one is called Daydreamer. Um, it's a 36 by 36 and it was actually in the Regions Bank show for the Art Guild uh, last year I'm a member of the Art Guild also uh, well, was I gotta renew my membership but um, here's a closer look at Einstein I know a few people were commenting about it um, see I like to incorporate the background into it also it's got different formulas and there's mixed media, that's some collage work, and I incorporate it into the face. Um, and then uh, I'll show you this. This is it's my Facebook right here. Um, it's an 11 by 14 mixed media pad that I have. And so I've, I was watching Avatar <laughs> when I did that one. None of these have been posted on social media, so y'all are getting an exclusive look at a lot of unfinished art. <laughs> um, 
So I like to play around with these and different facial expressions and stuff like that. Uh, it's still a work in progress. That one's going pretty good. I like this one so far. And that one. And yeah, that one's stuck. Okay. Then I've got the bigger ones. I've sold a lot of these faces, so that's why I like doing these a lot. Um, it's another thing I'm working on. So a lot of art in progress as well. Um, this back over here. So this over here is my oil and clay station now. Um, cold wax. I get a lot of questions about cold wax because apparently not a lot of people know what it is. Um, hang on, put my phone down. Get a close up of the oil palette real quick. But uh, cold wax is they're like it's just a wax that you don't melt. It's not like encaustic. You don't melt it and let it set or dry. But um, you add it with oil paint and you can spread it around. I use a lot of palette knives, scrapers. Uh, stuff like this. It's not really a brush, anything you want to use a brush with. Um, and going, speaking of texture mediums, this over here, um, use modeling paste, Liquitex modeling paste. Uh, I've got some golden glass bead gel, which is what you saw on the bigger piece I showed. Uh, gloss, of course. This I've got recently, it's a ceramic stucco by Liquitex and it's pretty cool um, and more glass bead gel so the glass beads are like what it sounds like um, small glass beads but uh, I use a lot of golden paints that's one thing I've been able to do it through support people supporting my work is you know get better supplies and I've, I've gotten spoiled on that for sure but uh, a lot of golden and I have a lot of cheaper, I call it say cheaper, but you know, more craft paint that I mixed in and it's kind of, I call it my filler paints. So I'm not using all my good stuff all the time, but um, I use a lot of acrylic inks and I've got, like I said, stencils and all these palette knives over here. Just a basket full of fun tools to use and they all get their own, you know, special marks and, uh, patterns and textures to it and stuff so yeah this is the captain's chair this is where I'm at all the time and over here I've got I, told you I use a lot of color pencils and sharpies and those are some pastels and other pencils and stuff I've got so just a I've got crayons and it's a one-stop shop I mean I, I've accumulated a lot of art supplies I don't think I'll be running out anytime soon but but um it just keeps it there's always something new to use and oh i'm sorry i was covering the thing with my finger <laughs> um i'm back so yeah i just i'm always trying something different and seeing where the art takes me i don't really take the art anywhere it takes me places so yeah Catherine, i see you um i've got your painting waiting so any questions from the audience yes laura thank you make me be quiet is there a time? What time is it? My hands? I'm checking to see if there's any questions. We got 15 people here. Yes, she does. I can answer that for you, Henry. She does. 1027, okay. Where can we purchase your art? Um, I, yeah, I need to plug my in my social media. Um, I'm on Facebook as Pockertees. You, if you, There's not another one, so you should be able to type it in and find me. Um, I have a personal page and an artist page, and then on Instagram here, it's underscore lowercase Pockertees underscore. Um, there should be a link maybe on the museum page also where you can get to my page. Um, but if you message me or email me or anything, I can give you purchasing info. I'm 
I'm kicking my easel, that's why I'm shaking, I'm sorry. What's the most emotional painting you've painted? Oh, um... I, I'm thinking emotional. There, a lot, any abstract piece. Uh, there's one, I, speaking of, I got way off track, but um, I have some work at Roots and Revelry in Birmingham. Uh, I, it's part of a Gallery 905 collaboration that they're doing. Um, so I've got, I think, 11 pieces hanging up there, and one of those is a, a really big abstract piece that I would say I probably had to put the most emotion into, uh, just because it was one of the very first really big ones that I did, and uh, yeah, it just, it, it took a toll on me, I guess you could say, um, and it's called Dist Distillation, um, but yeah, it's hanging at Roots and Revelry in Birmingham right now. Thank you to everyone who came and checked this out, by the way. Um, I hope you got some insight into my art and what it's all about. Let's see if I mentioned or I missed anything. And you can also go to the museum's website because there's the interview questions. I didn't even really get into that, but um, I, all of my answers are on there. I, tips for new artists and things like that uh, so you can check that out That's great. Thank you. all right Laura I made it I survived so I appreciate everyone who came and I'm gonna get back to creating some new work and follow my page and you'll be seeing you can go through and see pretty much anything I've done but if you are interested in any purchases just uh, message me on here or on Facebook and let me know and hopefully we can make a deal all right I'm gonna get back to it I appreciate it and I will see you guys next time maybe thank you